Welcome to Systems Argo. My name is Eric McLaughlin and I'm the astronomer for the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory. This month has given us a number of interesting views and weather events. We even got a bit of rain. We will get into those as they come up, so just sit back and enjoy these views and data from our observatory.
As we jump into our weather data, there are a couple of points in late October and early November that I want to point out. Note the relatively small difference between min and max temperatures on October 26th and 27th, and likewise in the days following November 5th. With humidity, note how low the minimum reached on October 26th and 27th. Now transitioning to our heat maps, which show temperatures for every day as a column which progresses upwards from midnight through the day to evening at the top. Like before, in this view we see something interesting on October 26th. For that day, the coolest time came after sunrise, and its hottest time was rather subdued compared to the surrounding days. Then after the 27th, we had significantly colder mornings. Likewise, in November, we see a sudden change on the 6th. Temperatures dramatically dropped and haven't yet returned to where they were beforehand. That sudden drop came from something we rarely get out here, rain. The rain that day also meant that the warmest temperatures on the 7th were in the morning. So let's put all of these interesting observations into our temperature and humidity scatter plot. Here we can see that we have some interesting new features as the green transitions to yellow. These features are worth taking a closer look at. To highlight the individual days in question, we will hide all of the other data and use a slightly more colorful color map. Now that we have quite the nice rainbow of data, let's zoom in and see how we move through it. Now starting on the 24th and 25th with the red dots on the top, they are distributed in a way that we're used to seeing in these plots. However, after midnight on the 26th, there was a sudden and precipitous drop in humidity, after which the values swirled around a bit down there before reaching the warmest temperatures of the day shortly before midnight. You will also notice there are a lot more than 24 data points for the 26th. And that is because our weather station records extra data points when things like gusts of wind trigger alerts. So was it the wind that caused the drop in humidity? No, rather both the drop in humidity and the high winds are likely indicative of another and in this case drier air mass moving into the area. Into the lighter orange of the 27th, temperatures and humidity did not vary all that much until the evening. As things transitioned into the 28th, we carried on through those yellow points into a more typical diagonal pattern seen in the green and light blue data of late October and early November. However, once we reached November 7th, those dark blue points did some interesting motion through the rainy day that was the 7th. After that, we fell into our more typical diagonal pattern. However, it was substantially colder than it was prior. Now, as we head into the latter portion of fall and start of winter, we can look forward to gathering more interesting data like these. And finally, transitioning into our solar telescope images. These images are taken with our H-Alpha solar telescope and have been colorized to show more detail. H-Alpha refers to a very specific wavelength of red light that comes primarily from the sun's chromosphere, an area just above the visible surface of the sun. The sun has been quite quiet for a long time now. Nonetheless, we are starting to see more sunspots. They're slightly cooler areas of the sun which have a high amount of magnetic flux passing through them. These are known as active regions on the sun and are often the kinds of places where solar flares and coronal mass ejections originate. Seeing more of these indicates that we are on our way out of solar minimum. However, it'll be a long time before we reach solar maximum, so don't expect to see a hundred sunspots on the sun next month. Nevertheless, there are plenty of good views to see, so enjoy and I will catch up with you as we wrap up.
Thank you for joining us for Systems Are Go, and a special thank you to the Rancho Mirage Library and Observatory Foundation for making programs like these possible. We hope you enjoyed your time here today. If you'd like to be kept up to date on all our programming, follow the link in the description below to sign up for our e-newsletter. We hope you enjoy the holidays, and remember to keep on looking up. Thank you.